Okay, this is, uh, these are examples of the common reed, um, which is known as Phragmite australis. And uh, it's the common reed, which is uh, everyone has seen on the, beside the road near estuaries and bays. They have this uh, efflorescence. It's uh, at the top of the stalk, and sometimes these stalks are very long, up to 10 to 12 feet tall. Um, the common reed, otherwise known as Phragmite australis. And uh, the cool thing about it is that the, the reed pen is made from this plant. And it is uh, there for you to see, to, to uh, for you to make your own reed pens. Um, and that this idea that you can just go out into the field and uh, harvest some phragmite and make a drawing tool is, to me, a very cool thing. So, <clears throat> as you can see, the common reed, which is part of the grass family, uh, it grows in these sections. And what I'm doing here is peeling off the outer covering, thin covering, so that to reveal a clean uh, uh, pith that is embedded within these um, uh, onion skin like coverings which wrap the reed stalk is a uh, a basic pith that um, doesn't separate. You can see as it, as I go down to the uh, near the bottom of the stalk the outer leaves, the sheaths are disintegrating, revealing the inner stalk, which has a touch of green to it. And that is optimum for reed pens. A little bit of green, not too much green. Now these pens, or that is to say these stalks, have been harvested in November, which can be a little late in the season. I like to uh, harvest them in late October. You can harvest them all year round, but that bit of green gives a supple, supple quality to the pen. Allows it, to, it seems to me anyway, it just bends easier and I get a cleaner cut when I'm um, cutting the point. So, once you get to this point in prepping the Phragmite, um, <clears throat> you're going to start to cut these into sections. And what I uh, like to do is I see where that growth ring, uh, the last year's growth ends and the subsequent year's growth begins. And uh, it forms a little node here. You can see. And then that's, if you cut that node, you'll notice that it's very um, dense. Whereas the fibers in the shaft of the stalk are more longer and laying side by side, where in this um, nodule uh, it becomes very pithy and the, the structure of the cells becomes more uh, dispersed so it, it's harder to cut. And, and so for that reason I like to cut the point roughly about two and a half to three inches above that growth ring. So I can have at least a half an inch or so of workable point where I can make my scoop cut and then just down from that toward the, the growth ring I can do a double cut scoop which gives greater flexibility to the point. And that gives me with, so I'd like to have at least an inch, maybe maybe more, 
an inch of a solid foundation before I get to that growth ring. And this also is, facilitates being able to recut your pen. Let's see, uh, the pens can be sharpened. So if you leave enough space for eventual sharpening, you will be within range to have that buffer zone to the growth ring. But they're so easy to make, um, you may not want to just recut a pen, maybe you would, um, but most of the time you'd probably just want to make a fresh one. So, this is Fragmite, newly harvested, ready to be uh, cleaned up, as you can see how I did this one. And um, so we'll clean these up and we'll start making our cuts as to uh, so we can get on the road with making our pens. So we'll, we'll cut these uh, stalks, as I said before, just above just above the growth point ring and um, about two to three inches we'll make cuts all along that stalk and um, you see there's a natural bend in this stalk sometimes I like to do depending if you're right or left handed you can cut so that bend rests comfortably into the crook of your between your index finger and thumb so it's a little ergonomic in that regard okay so let's let's make some pens okay let's make a reed pen another reed pen okay so I'm gonna take this blank and um, it's really good size pen blank, which comes probably from near the bottom of the pen, or of the stalk, because uh, as you get up toward the tip, your uh, diameters get thinner and thinner. So this is probably down near the base, this is up near the top. You could use one of these for, oh, just very fine uh, pen work. Uh, not that you couldn't do the fine pen work with a big one, but uh, it's all a matter of personal preference. So, thin, thick. So we'll take the thick one. And what I'm going to do here is make the cuts, okay? And what I like to do is make a little mark where that scoop is going to go. About three quarters of an inch in this case, right about there. And then I'm going to be sure to leave about an inch, three quarters of an inch, for the um, foundation section. That is an uncut buffer before you get to the growth ring. Okay? So then I'm going to see how that pen feels in my hand. Just remove a little bit of this, these leaves on the outside. Just for. Uh, there we go. And now I'm going to feel how that pen feels in my hand, the weight of it, okay? And try to determine where the spine is. The spine is the back of the pen. So wherever that feels comfortable to me, I'm feeling, okay, that is the back of the pen. That's the spine of the pen, right about there. So underneath that, directly opposite of that point, is the... Um, the anterior, or the front of the pen, okay, and that's where we're going to do our cuts, underneath, anteriorly, and inferior, so underneath, right, take our um, utility knife, see where the belly of that pen is, and then make the first scoop cut right at that line, that three-quarter of an inch inch line. So, first I'll make our scoop cut, like that, like that, three cuts. Now you notice, 
as I cut through a cylinder, I'm cutting through cross sections, and as I start to move toward the back wall, or the dorsal, in this case, uh, the posterior, um, that point is starting to take shape. There we go. But I don't want to push down too hard with the knife as I approach the back side, because that will bend and possibly fracture the, uh, the uh, pen nib. Okay, so we want this pen nib surface to be as structurally sound and intact as possible because we're carving everything away from it. So that is the action on that pen tip. Okay, that nib needs to be flexible. So, um, as I get closer and closer, I'm backing up the pressure and I may need to support that with my finger. So possibly this would be one of those situations where you might want to use a glove, one of those fishing gloves perhaps. Anyway, as you can see, the, um, the pen tip is starting to take shape. You can see the scoop, okay? Now what I'm going to do here is gradually carve that tip to the thickness that I want. I am no longer scooping down into the meat of that pen. What I'm doing here is I am now trying to I'm trying to create a pen nib thickness. So and to have it graduate very slightly to a finer and finer point. So rather than digging down into the scoop, I rotate the knife laterally, that is to the side, and then just start to take little shavings off, making sure I do the same for this side. Remember, it's symmetrical, so you'll find that as you make these pens, uh, you may have to compensate, or you will have to compensate for your own right or left-handedness to be able to make something that is symmetrical. So there's some correction that needs to be done. As you can see, this pen is slightly lopsided, and it has to do with you know, my right-handedness. So that means that I'm just going to slightly shave that side to turn it over and I'm getting back to symmetry. There we go. Okay, getting back to symmetry. So, now, um, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to see how just finesse this little end, this tip just one little bit more. Just take a little bit of meat off on the inside. Just very little pressure. I'm not changing the tip at all. I'm just shaving some of the meat off of this section behind the tip. Now I'm going to make the secondary cut. Okay, So midway between these first points that I specified, I'm going to make another scoop cut, but a shallow scoop cut. See? Just that little piece. And clean it up. So I'm turning my wrist. Clean it up. And now you'll see that I have two scoops, a primary and a secondary scoop. The secondary scoop serves to add flexibility to the pen. Now I'm going to um, grab the Dremel tool in this, in this case and I'm going to uh, clean it up a little bit. Setting on low setting with the uh, sand sanding bits. I'm just going to clean this up just a little bit because I want to be able to see where I'm going to drill my reservoir hole. But I'm being very careful to stay away from the tip. Okay, I want that tip to be cut and not sanded or abraded. There we go.
and a braided tip is not a, a even though it looks the same perhaps it's not doesn't act the same and as I feel there's a little bit of a nodule on the tip of that pen so I am going to just with a sharp knife just, just remove it just like that see how easy that is okay now I see what, how much tip I have the width of the tip now I'm going to cut the tines. Okay. I'm going to measure roughly a put a line by eye I'm going to measure and put a line that divides the tip. If you can see that. Then I'm going to take my uh, a razor blade and uh, my little framer's hammer. Making sure that it is exactly halfway. Remember, measure twice, cut once. Okay, and then Now, that unfortunately was overly aggressive. And what happened is it re actually removed a section of that fragmite pen. See, I don't want those tines to be apart, I want them to be close together. So, that one is ruined. And we'll try another one. Oh, let's try this one. This is a longer one. See that shape to it? It has that angle. Oh yeah. That, my friend, is going to be... This is the, the back of my pen. And so now I'm going to turn it over and this is the belly of the pen. And uh, so I sometimes draw a little line there to help me. And uh, I'm going to come off that tip about an inch, three quarters. Draw a line there, my Sharpie. And then I'm going to come back up here and make sure that I have a buffer before I reach the growth ring. That's my foundation. Now I'll take my utility knife, put the belly side up, make my scoop cut. Shallow at first, gradually deeper, climbing toward the tip. See? One, two, three, four, five. Now, I'm going to back that tip up because I don't want it to bend too much. Okay, there we go. That's our first first scoop cut. And as you can see, it has a nice S curve in profile. <clears throat> so I'm going to rotate my knife laterally, 90 degrees, and I'm going to gently shape that tip. Notice, I'm trying to make sure it's symmetrical. So everything I do on this side, I rotate it to the other side and take that off as well. Looking to make a tip that is about a sixteenth of an inch or a little better in width. Now, that I've done that, I'm going to make my secondary cut. So from this line down about a quarter of an inch, I make another scoop, but a shallow scoop, as if I was just starting, and that's it. Maybe clean it up just a touch, like that. Perfect. All right, now I'm going to take my Dremel tool, fire it up 
sanding bit, low speed. And clean up the shaft just a little bit. Staying off the tip best I can. Because I don't want an abraded tip. I want a cut tip. I want a tip that is just clean and only carved from a knife blade. Because that way I get a longer lasting pen, nib, and um, cleaner line. So now I'm going to put a little uh, mark for the halfway point. Divide the, the width of this ten, pen nib into into two. So the half halfway is right about there. And um, using that as a guide, I'm going to take my razor blade and a piece of foam core, line it up. Being sure that it's divided. Okay, then I'm going to gently tap with the razor blade, and voila, we have the tines cut. So you can see that tine, the, the razor blade cut right down the middle as I'm splaying out the two tines. So, perfect. <clears throat> now I'm going to take a cordless drill with a sixteenth inch bit, drill bit. Laying the pen down on its back, I'm going to, well, let's see, first of all, sometimes you can do this by eye, but I am going to make sure that by splaying it very slightly, I can spot where I want my reservoir to go. There it is. Drill right down into that little mark. Colors to it. Okay, and I'm going to clean that up from this side just a little bit. Actually, um, great tool to use for cleaning up reservoir holes is an awl. So you can just wiggle the tip of that awl right in there, and it enlarges it and pushes back. any extraneous um, reed uh, material that may clog it. There we go. So we're making sure that it's open. There we go. Lastly, we're going to clean up that tip. And uh, so here we go. Laying the pin right on, pin right on its back. going to take the utility knife. Hee-ho! Yes, and the utility knife. And um, make a really clean cut. In fact, I'm going to use the razor blade because I think it's sharper at this point. Just one clean cut. As you can see, it just took a little pieces off. I got a nice clean tip. Okay, reed pen, Phragmite Australis, double scoop, reservoir, two tines cut, and manicured tip. Now go out and make some drawings.